Okay, hi everybody, welcome. How is everyone doing tonight? Not like you can really answer. <laughs> uh, you could just turn on your microphone and say hello so I know that there are people out there. Hello. Hi there. Hello. 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 Great. Hi everyone. It's so nice to hear your voices. It's very similar to um, me being on MS Teams with my students. Um, the teenagers that I work with, they're all very quiet until I ask them to, you know, turn on their mic and say hi. And then you hear their sweet little voices and you know that, that they're out there. So it's a similar sort of thing. So welcome everybody. Um, I just did some really quick notes to begin with, to kick things off while you were learning about all your tech things before the meeting started. And so just like main goals for tonight, uh, number one is to have fun. So um, for you know myself, I'm aiming to do that. And also I hope for you as well. Secondly, I would say to hopefully maybe relieve some stress and anxiety if you have any, if you don't, then awesome. That's fantastic for you. Um, and for the rest of us who might actually have some, <laughs> I find painting really helps. So uh, if you've joined this because you want a little bit of escape from reality right now, then uh, hopefully you will get that. Um, and also to learn some new painting techniques. If, um, if you're new to painting, then everything will be maybe new for you. Or maybe if you are a seasoned professional, hopefully you'll be able to pick something up from me because we all kind of do things a little bit differently. So I'm always happy to learn from another professional and I hope you would feel the same way if you are somebody who is a creative um, daily. And uh, I would say fourthly to make a, an awesome painting. Um, I would like to remind all of you that I hope that you will come into this with the feeling of creating your own version of this Franklin Carmichael painting. Uh, if you're the kind of person that, that you know, if, if you're looking for an exact copy, then fantastic. I can certainly do my best to kind of set you up for that success. But by no means do you need to uh, create an exact copy of this image. It is my hope that you just start to take, kind of take it on and make it your own. Change out colors if you want to change the palette. Um, at, at any time, change forms and shapes, please feel free to do so, okay? Because in the end, it's this is really about you and um, you just having like, a, you know, uh, a creative time. And a creative time is, is about just having that freedom to play, which is, I'm going to make that the mandate of the night, freedom to play, for myself included. Okay, so with that said, um, the best thing we can do is get our base color onto our canvas as soon as possible. And then we can chit chat and talk about other things. And um, once we're waiting thing for things to dry. Uh, if you do have a hair dryer, you will probably want to employ the use of it once we get this, this first sort of base uh, color on. So I'm going to suggest that we just start right away because Two hours really does go by quite quickly. And I would like you to have enough time to do all those really lovely details at the end without you feeling rushed, okay? So I'm going to start with the largest brush. And this is called a flat, a large flat. And what I'm going to do is get my palette set up to lay in this three color wash. So all you're going to need right now, and I'm using, I actually found these in my basement. Um, so I'm using these foam plates, which make really great palettes, but whatever you have going um, for palette mixing, I'm sure will work. So the first thing I like to do is I take my brush and I dip it in water. And that's just to soften the bristles and so that the paint doesn't stain the, the hair on your bristles. So you want to just dip it in water and, and I'm just gonna wipe it down a bit. Sorry, my camera's doing 
goofy things here and I had everything set up so perfectly. That's just the way it goes. So we'll just have to work with it here. <laughs> it seems to be whenever I move it shifts. So I'll try not to move too much. Okay, everybody. So what we're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take some of that phthalo blue. This is mine. Um, and I'm going to put a blob. Yes, a very official, official painting term. Put a blob of blue on there. Now, you're probably only gonna need about that much for, for this beginning stage. If you have to add more, you can add more at any time. But I would start with just an amount like that. And then I'm gonna grab my white. And I'm gonna put some white on there as well. I don't care about these people, let's just. In the end, you're probably going to need more white than blue. So you could put a healthy dose of white on your palette. We're going to do a three tone um, ombre would be the term. And I've got my sample painting in front of me. I actually painted this painting in advance so that I could break down the steps and, I, and so that I knew what I was doing so I could help you. Uh, so I'm looking at the painting right now. If you have the image in front of you, um, we've got a section of sky and then we have a section of water and then we have the foreground, which is our rocks. Okay, so what we're going to do is just set up a background kind of tri-color, tri-tone set up so that we've got color underneath so that then we can build on top. Okay, so we want a, what I would say is a mid-tone blue. So I'm gonna take some of my phthalo blue and I'm gonna add some white to it. So I would say 50-50. 50% blue, 50% white. Don't want it to be too dark. We're gonna have dark down at the bottom. So again, so this is where I'd like to remind you, if, if what you're doing isn't exactly the same as me, don't fret, okay, don't worry about it. You're still going to end up with a very successful image in the end. If your colors shift a little bit from mine, then that's totally fine, okay? All right, so I make, I'm gonna make up a little batch of this. I'm what you call a palette painter. I like to mix as I go. I'm a bit lazy. Um, I, I don't like to do a lot, <laughs> a lot of planning. So painters, some painters will pre-mix all their, their colors and containers and then have that ready. I'm not like that. I mix on the palette and sometimes I mix right on top of the canvas. That's just me. That's just the radical that I am. Okay, so I've got my color, what I'm gonna do. And so again, I want you to think about this as the warm up. Uh, you're, you're just kind of getting your, your, um, you know, your feet wet a little bit to the process. So when you put the paint on the canvas, you're gonna get an idea of how much, maybe how much water you need to add. I don't use a lot of water, I have to say. If I'm working with watercolor, obviously I would, but we're working with acrylic paint and I like a heavier sort of paint on the canvas. Now, if you're having trouble getting that color moving on your canvas, then dip your brush in the water. Just dip your brush in the water and you can go back and add a little bit of that water to your mix of color, okay? So we're going to work horizontally across and you're going to paint about a third of the canvas with this color. If you start to run out, you're gonna do what I do. You're gonna be a palette mixer and you're gonna go back and you're gonna mix yourself more of the color. If it's not exactly the same, don't worry about it. And then I just dip my brush in the water again, just, just so that it's, you know, you can move the paint around. 
You don't want to be struggling with getting paint on the canvas. That's not fun. But you do want to make sure that you've covered your canvas. Although I would say with this painting, a little bit of white coming through is not going to hurt because we've got those lovely clouds in the sky. So I'm going to probably stop there. That's about a, roughly a third of my canvas. Um, I expect that probably everybody has different size canvases. I'm working on one that's, you know, quite large. Um, some of you might have smaller ones, which is nice too, and maybe a bit more manageable <laughs> for putting paint down. So what I'm going to do next is we want to bring this color down and we want to lighten it because that's the section of the lightest part of the sky that meets the horizon line, the line that basically divides our image in half horizontally and then moves down into the water, which is quite white as well. So I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna add it to that color that I've mixed already. So you ideally want a lighter color of blue. And then you're going to add that. And think of like another third, a section of a third of the of your canvas. And what you do want to do is you want to go back up into that first color and break that line. So you just want to make sure that you don't have a solid line. You want to blend. So you're doing a technique right now. There's going to be a few techniques that you're going to learn tonight. Right now, we're going to call this one wet blending. So you're going to go back up into that first color and hopefully in the end you have this really lovely soft segue. But I'm going to add a little bit more white and bring that down again to about a third. So I just want this second area to be lighter. And like I say, this is a good opportunity for you to just kind of get used to putting the paint on the canvas, mixing your color on the palette. It's a great little warm up and it gets our background in. So that's, I'm going to, I'm going to stop there and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to mix a darker blue again. I'm going to make it a little bit darker than the top third. So I'm using my blue. I still want to have some white in there. Let's see how that looks. I'm actually going to start right from the bottom and work up. Ooh, that's nice. So I'm laying in a, a nice dark base for those rocks in the foreground. That's what I'm thinking with this. Leslie, we have a question. Yeah. And um, one of the painters is wondering, does the water help blend in the paintbrush streaks? Um, yes, it will. So that's a really great question. And we can certainly address that right now. If you do not want brush strokes, <laughs> whoops, look what I just did. Um, then yes, more water on your brush would eliminate those brush strokes. Now, some of you might like that textural sort of look and um, maybe leave some of the brush strokes behind. So it's really kind of up to you how you want to do that. The style of group of seven painting is, is fairly flat and sort of like large, bold areas of color that are, are, that are fairly flat. But there are some group of seven painters that work very textural. So in the end, it's up to you. But yes, more water would disperse the brush strokes for sure. Does that help? That's great. Thank you so much, Leslie. Okay.
Um, I, I'm a painter that likes lots of texture, but I'm also right now starting trying to stay true to the style of Carmichael. So, and if you can, you know, notice, you take a look at the image, it's very still. I'm imagining it's, you know, a very still day, not a lot of wind. Um, you know, everything seems very um, sort of quiet, it has a quiet feeling. So if you want to reflect that in your painting, then yes, your, how you lay on the paint is going to be very sort of soft and smooth. Okay, now I have a bit of an abrupt line there. So I'm actually going to go back and lighten that blend a little bit. I just want a nice soft blend because I'm kind of fussy that way. Don't get too fanatical about this stage <laughs> in that, as you can see, we're gonna be doing a lot of other things over top of this. So I'm gonna call this step done. Um, now, if you wanted to take a moment and paint your edges while we wait for this step to dry, and I'm also gonna put my hair dryer on it and you can do that as well. Uh, I, my edges are blue already. So if you want to, and I'm going to clean them up a bit. If you want the edges of your canvas to be nice and, and kind of like clean looking, particularly if you plan on hanging this on your walls, which I'm sure you will want to when you're done, then take a minute now to paint your edges and make them look really clean and finished. If you plan on putting your canvas in a frame, then I wouldn't worry too much about painting your edges. But I don't have any frames right now and getting anything framed during COVID is challenging. So I plan on just hanging this painting on my wall. So I'm gonna do all my edges. There's two schools of thought in painting edges. Um, not everybody believes in it, particularly if you're an abstract expressionist painter. It's not really the most important thing. In fact, with that kind of painting, the artist likes to leave like spills and smudges and paint coming around the edge as part of the, of the product. And then there's the other school of thought where everything needs to be really clean and organized and finished. So I'm pretty happy with the lay-in of my three-tone ombre. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to take my brush out of my hand because I will just continue to do that and then we'll never move forward. So what I'm gonna do is dip my brush in the water and just swish it around. And then I'm gonna get my hair dryer, and I'm going to dry that up a bit because we can't really do anything more until this paint is set up a bit. So I'm going to take this over to <laughs> where my hair dryer is and blast it with a hair dryer for a minute or two. So I'm gonna give you all time to do that as well. If you don't have a hair dryer, then you're maybe doing something like this or blowing on it or something, okay? But I am gonna suggest that everybody stop painting. Um, hopefully you have all of your colors on and then just take the brush away, <laughs> okay? All right, I'm gonna do my hair dryer. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> how, how are we all doing, drying or painting? So you're, you're, the paint doesn't have to be 100% dry. It's not going to be. It, it's going to take hours to, to dry fully to set up but you just want it to be dry to the touch so that when you put your finger on it, paint's not coming off, okay? That's basically where we need to be. So I maybe just get a check-in to see whether we're all at this point and ready to move on. Our next steps are going to be doing a little bit of drawing.
I'm just taking a look at my steps here. <laughs> There's 20 steps in this painting, by the way, and we will do it. We will get to number 20, trust me. Um, Kathleen and Chris, I'm wondering if you could maybe help me just with a check-in to see if everybody is ready to move forward. Yeah, um, I guess if people, if anyone has a question or if they need us to slow down, if you could just pop a note in the chat, that would be great. Otherwise, we'll sort of assume that you're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have uh, one of the painters is saying that uh, they need a couple of minutes. Okay, yeah. Okay, no worries. I can chit chat a little bit. Yep, a couple, uh, us too, we're hearing it from a few. So I guess yeah. uh, you're just too fast, Leslie. You're just, <laughs> you're the expert. Everyone else is just trying to keep up with you. That's okay. I kind of do this in my sleep. So <laughs> this is what I do. There's a lot of other things I don't know how to do very well. So, you know, we all, we all have different skills here. Um, okay, so well, we're getting everybody on board to move forward. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll talk about the group of seven a little bit, maybe talk about this painting. Um, I just actually was reviewing some history of the group of seven and I like, I always feel like, oh, I know it, I've studied it in school and, you know, I've gone to lots of galleries and you, you know, you kind of think that you know everything and then you read something and it's like, oh, I didn't know that before. So I did just learn some new things as I was prepping for tonight. Um, so what I did know, and what probably quite a lot of you do know, is that the Group of Seven had their first exhibition in 1920, and it was not received well. There was a reporter who uh, blatantly said, um, upon critiquing the show, that he thought the work looked like the inside of a drunkard's stomach. Um, and I, I guess he might have been referring to, I'm only just going to kind of think about what, why he would see the work that way. But, you know, we're talking about rugged landscapes, very sketchy, um, you know, lots of paint on the canvas, uh, maybe landscapes that people didn't really know about or, I think there was this idea at the time that the Canadian wilderness was not like it was not refined and that the, you know, trying to kind of embrace this wilderness and going out into the wilderness was for people who, you know, hiked and canoed and fished and it wasn't um, a refined kind of way of living. And so I think in the end, it was the group of men, a uh, group of seven's mandate to educate people about the beauty of the Canadian landscape and to really create like a distinctive kind of Canadian art. So we're talking about Canadian nationalism here and, and this idea that, that, you know, the group of seven could show Canadians and maybe the rest of the world, particularly European painters um, that there is strength and independence in Canada. And they were trying to do that through their painting. So that basically was their, their mandate. So they formed this group together and it was their goal to edu educate people about this. And every time somebody had a negative idea about or thought about their artwork, because they were educated and informed people, uh, quite a number of the group of seven artists were teachers um, and they were educated. So they were able to uh, stand up for what they were, what they believed in. They were able to explain to people what they were doing. And eventually they did. And they had their last show in 1931. And then they felt they don't need to continue any longer because they felt that people had been educated and they weren't getting the same kind of pushback um, from their images as they did in the beginning. So then they became the... Canadian group of painters. And that's kind of where they went from there. Um, what I didn't know is the McMichael Gallery in Kleinberg, I did not know that there were six of the group of seven artists buried there. Um, maybe some of you have been there. 
and uh, have seen that. I haven't been for quite some time. Uh, the McMichael Gallery does hold over 6,000 group of seven artworks, which is pretty amazing. So next time, um, uh, the McMichael Gallery actually has virtual shows online right now, but I'm waiting to go on a nice summer day and so that I can walk around the grounds and hopefully we will be able to sooner than later get back into galleries. That is my hope. Okay, I'm seeing a message, Leslie, that um, people are, I think, ready to move along. Yes, awesome. Okay, yeah. good. All right, so my friends, we um, need to do a little bit of drawing. So the way we do this, um, I did put on the list, I think you had a choice of using a pencil or this is my most favorite Hang on here. <laughs> it's upside down. <laughs> I gotta get myself organized. There we go. This is willow charcoal. I use this a lot. It's fantastic for drawing because you can actually rub it away very easily. You don't need to use an eraser. Unfortunately, pencil and paint, depending on like your colors, um, it's hard to erase pencil. So you do need to be mindful of pencil lines. It's not going to matter with what we're doing tonight. But if you are playing in the world of painting, you might want to pick yourself up some of this. So this is willow charcoal. You can buy it at Curry's, Michael's, a whole bunch of places. I like to buy the thin vine, OK? Um, but you can also use a pencil, whatever works best for you. Okay, so what we need to do is set up some of these forms. I'm just looking for my instructions here. All right, so if you take a look at the image, we have a horizon line, which is about like half of the painting. So I'm going to ask that you, all of us together, um, just draw a nice, loose, horizontal line. Don't worry about it being perfect. Water is organic. And as much as it may look like a perfectly <laughs> organized line, it's not because it moves. So there's my horizon line. All right, the next thing we're going to do is, I think what we'll do is that we'll attack these rock forms in the foreground. I'm just moving. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing somebody talking about the weather right now. <laughs> okay, so we're going to, hang on one second. We're gonna draw in our rock forms, which are in the foreground. The foreground is what's closest to us in the image. And then as we move further back, we get farther away, we have background. So we've got these lovely rock forms. Rock forms are organic. Again, do not worry whether your rock forms are exactly the same as the image. In fact, I'll tell you, this painting probably will go a little bit more relaxed for you if you just kind of like let that go a little bit, myself included, okay? So I'm gonna start at the left-hand side of my painting and I'm gonna go up like maybe two inches and I'm gonna loosely draw, whoops, there goes my charcoal a little bit. I'm going to loosely draw an organic form that moves across and kind of swoops down into the other corner, something like that. And then I'm going to start again from the left hand side and I'm going to put in that main large shape. And, and again, I cannot remind you enough. Try, try to just loosen up with this. And I'm reminding myself as well, because I'm feeling a little like, but 
I want a really, just a really loose, soft, organic shape that's going to go over top of my horizon line. If you want to make it pointy up there, it's whatever works for you. I really don't think you can go too far wrong with this. As long as you leave a little section of water over there, whoops. <laughs> thing about the vine charcoal is it does like to break a little bit. So we've got, this is gonna be water. This is gonna be water. You don't have to write that in. I'm just doing that for you. And then you can take that away. That will be covered by paint, but I'm gonna remove that. So you want something that looks like that. So it is my natural instinct to go back and fuss with lines. I don't want to do that. And, and I'm going to suggest that you don't do that either unless you really are unhappy with your main shape. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is put in those little landforms behind this main organic rock. So again, I'm just going to, I'd say probably like a third in. I'm really going to just loosely and I'm going to carry it over here, although the forms on this side are a little bit more mountainous looking and then let it just sort of drift off over there. Now I am feeling I am changing this a little bit. I'm going to make the top part of this form a little bit higher. Which you can definitely do. It's really up to you. Every time I paint this painting, it looks a little bit different and I'm allowing that to happen. And also, I know that I can move and shift things a little bit when I'm adding the rest of my paint, okay? So I want something that looks like that. Uh, and I think while we're at it, while we're drawing right now, let's draw in some clouds. So clouds are really one of my most favorite things to paint. I paint a lot of clouds. My background is in theater. I was a scenic painter for years working in theater and opera and film. And we did a lot of cloud painting uh, on backdrops for the stage. So well, I used to work at the Stratford Festival and that's where I learned how to paint clouds. And then in my own artwork, it's like I say, it's one of my most favorite things to do. I like a very wispy, um, fast moving cloudy sky and then lots of, lots of textural paint on top. So for your clouds, again, allow yourself just to kind of start where you feel like you need to. Don't worry if it looks exactly the same. I'm just looking at the sample painting and it's about one, two, three, four, five, about five or six like lines of clouds, okay? So I'm gonna move up into the sky. I'm gonna start maybe around here. Clouds are beautiful, organic, soft forms that there's really no rules to it. So allow yourself to just keep the shapes really simple. So there's my first layer or level. I'm going to start my next one just, just slightly underneath. And I'm gonna bring this one all the way across. And when we go to paint these clouds, you can shift your shapes a little bit. If you don't like the way these look, you can shift them when you add paint. There's always room for improvement. It's not a, 
you know, what you draw, you're not always, you don't have to be stuck with that. You are in control of this. So you can change things whenever you want. So I've got three there. I'm going to do another bank of clouds underneath. And I'm going to go right across. And you can see I'm just like I'm allowing my charcoal to kind of just move across on its own. I'm not getting too fussy about the shapes. No matter what you do, they're going to look like clouds. So <laughs> I have confidence in you. Okay, so there's a quite a heavy one just underneath this one on the left. That just kind of almost touches the rock area. Oops. And then this whole area, I'm going to put this in this line quite dark. We've got a band of like a highlight that goes right behind the rock area. So this is all, I'm going to do this. This is all going to be quite white, okay? You don't need to do this unless you want to, but you don't need to. I'm just trying to show you. So, and then these are our rock forms here. So basically that is our drawing setup. How's everybody doing? Do we have organic forms on our canvas? Looks good, Leslie. No comments in the chat. So I think everybody is uh, right along with you. <laughs> okay, good. I'll take your silence as concentration and success until I hear otherwise, which is what I say to the teenagers when they don't say anything on in our virtual classes. Okay. I'm just trying to think of our next plan. So I think what I'd like to do is we're going to get some color on these, these forms down here. And the way painting goes, most painters work like this, is you know you set up one area, well that area is drying, you move to another area, and it's this like lovely dance back and forth between the shapes so that you're not sitting there literally watching paint dry unless you like to do that. As I said, I, I don't know, I like I get bored. If I don't keep moving along, then that's it. So I do like to multitask with my painting. So let's get set up for our rock formations. I'm going to start, I'm going to keep that palette going because we're going to go back and use that. But I'm going to start a new palette for our browns and greens and black. So just give me a minute. I'm going to move some of my things out of the way here so I have some more room for paint mixing. Um, I don't know what everyone else is drinking. I'm drinking tea right now. So do be careful that you're not dipping your brush into your tea or your wine or your coffee or whatever um, you're enjoying. Definitely something to remember. I have, I have drank paint water before it's not good good point Leslie yeah um just just an important <laughs> health and safety while painting okay so I am now going to get ready to get some greens brown you're going to need your green brown and black And I'm going to just show you what I'm going to do here with this palette set up. Wow, I already have paint all over my hands and everywhere else. So that's a good sign. Okay, what do we need? We need a little bit of burnt umber. Burnt umber. Um, I, I don't like to start with too much paint because I feel like you can always add more and then you don't waste it at the end, depending on... Um. 
Yeah. Leslie, question. Yeah. Uh, one of our painters doesn't have burnt umber. Uh, can you tell us how to mix up some burnt umber? Um, like, no, so no brown at all? I guess not. Okay. Well, how do we usually... No, that's correct. No brown. So, but every other color? Um, Jeannie, do you want to unmute yourself? Oh, yeah, she has other colors. Okay. So when we don't have... And like basically to make brown is mixing a whole bunch of different colors all together. So she could do the blue, green, yellow, and then if she added black, she would probably get to a brown. Okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> brown is just like one of those weird, I'm going to do a quick mix here. So if she's got green, sorry. Just, I'm just going to do a little sample myself here to help her out. And then I'm going to throw some black on there too. Let's see what happens. You got to try it. And if in the end, she's not getting an exact brown, that's okay. She's going to wing it. <laughs> and it just means, it just means the foreground rocks are going to be a little bit more green, which is totally okay. fine. Oh, there we go. That's not bad. I, I know it just looks like dark green, but with that yellow, hang on. Yeah, so I would just sort of stick with a dark greeny, blacky blue. Be okay. fine. <laughs> I think all those colors look nice together anyway. So I know. Not tragic. I was hoping for a little bit more brown, but I think what we would have to add is like maybe orange. And mm. we don't have red. That's why. If she happens to have red, she could put red in there. Okay. And all right. Thanks, please. Leslie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we do our best. Okay, so I'm setting up my palette and I've got brown, I've got green, phthalo green, and I'm gonna put some black on there. Now, I'm gonna switch size of brush as well. I'm gonna move to, I think I suggested for all of you a, a sort of a mid a mid flat. Now this actually has a little angle on it. I'm very partial to brushes that are angled because then you can get into corners and details. So you just might want to move down a size with your brush. You don't want the smallest one, but you don't want to be working with that big large one that we did in the beginning. Okay, so again, you just dip your brush in the water. Now, if at any time your water's starting to look really icky and kind of gross, then take a minute and switch it out. I'm gonna stick with my water like this for now because we're, we're going to work in darker colors. But when we go back into the sky and the water and we start bringing in those whites, I will suggest that we all clean our water up a little bit, okay? So I'm just dampening my brush what I'm going to do is I think we'll mix a, I'm going to take a bit of that phthalo green, a bit of the black, and I'm going to put a tiny bit of brown in there, not very much. Okay, so I'm going to go right up into that top of that rock formation. And I'm just gonna follow my lines. Again, if you feel like the paint is not going onto the canvas nicely, dip your brush in water and then go back 
into your color. So you can be pretty free with this. I know that the rocks are different colors in different areas, but we're not there yet. We've just got to get a main color in right now. So I'm going to stick with a little bit of phthalo green, a little bit of black, and a little bit of brown. And I'm going to fill in that form. You can be really nice and loose with this. We do want a little bit of texture and movement for sure. Our goal is to just get that color in and then we will go back and we will do some more layers on it. But we've got to get something, something started here. Like I said, I mix as I go. So I also find I don't waste a lot of paint that way. I just mix what I need. So I don't know, I've got to form something like this. <laughs> And I'm just thinking about whether we want to get some more of this green in as well, this greeny blacky brown color. I'm going to do a quick move here. You can see to the left of the painting, there's water. And we, I mean, it could be rocks. It could be rocks with water splashing over top of it. But we do want to leave that area over here a little in blue. So I'm going to ask that you don't put dark green over there. I'm actually just quickly sketching this in. You could do that as well if you want. What I'm trying to get us to is just getting this area filled in with our dark greeny, browny black, and then leave this. Leave this area over here blue, OK? So this is going to be blue. Oops. So we've got this soft sort of mound in the front there. And I'm going to fill that in with the same color. So a bit of brown, a bit of green, a bit of black. And then I'm going to pop that in there. Now, if you can leave a little bit of blue Don't take that color right up to the other form. Leave a tiny bit of blue showing through. Now I'm really asking you to do something crazy. I'm asking you to basically draw <laughs> and paint at the same time. But I know you can do it. If you cover that area, don't worry. You can go back and add blue because we will be coming back in with blue. So no worries if you've taken this color right up to here. But if you, if you have it, then great. Something like that. And then you're, we're going to keep this blue over here. Although I'm going to do something crazy and I'm going to add a tiny little bit of blacky brown just under here. There is just a little dark form there. There. Wow. Actually quite like that. I'm not sure about this form right now. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm questioning the way I drew that. 
I'm holding myself back from doing anything too crazy. Although, here I go. I am gonna shift the shape of this a little bit, okay? If you are happy with your shape, don't mess with it. I'm, I'm not, so I'm gonna do this. Because, hey, I'm in control of this image. There. I think it was just, I just didn't want it so pointy at the top. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be happy with that. So hopefully we're all at this stage <laughs> or you're working through it right now. Any questions? I don't see anything in our chat. So I'm assuming there's no questions, Leslie. Fantastic, okay. Well, I'm gonna give everybody a minute or so to just get those forms filled in. Um, I'll tell you where we're gonna head next. We're gonna go up into these little landforms back here. And that will be back into our blue palette. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take a minute, I'm gonna rinse my water, I'm gonna change my water out because it is really kind of mucky right now and um, rinse my brushes out. So you might wanna do that as well. So I'm gonna disappear for a minute <laughs> and uh, clean some stuff up and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back with fresh water, clean brushes. Get my work areas looking uh, like a bit of a disaster zone, so I'm gonna clean it up for a minute. Um, what I'm gonna suggest is that we move forward. Uh, I know I'm, I'm, I'm really pushing you, but I know that you can do it. Um, we'll put in these little lamb forms behind here um, and then how are we doing for time? Maybe take a like a five minute break and go to the washroom and that sort of thing. Does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. I think so. We're about halfway through. We're doing great for time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So if people need to sort of duck out for a second. That's fine. Sure. Okay. Well, we could we could do a little bit of a break now. People are cleaning and just switching switching things out a little bit. Um, I just want to make sure that we have enough time to do all of our highlights and all the things that we need to do. So I'll leave it up to the gang and see where everybody's at. Okay, everyone, if there's uh, someone who needs a few moments, let us know in the chat, please. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we, we are having some folks saying yes, please. Okay, okay. <laughs> good go. to the break. Yeah, no problem. Um, I may just uh, go to the washroom and uh, warm my tea up and um, leave people to clean their, clean their water, clean out your brushes, and then we'll resume in about five minutes. Does that sound okay? Perfect. Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> okay.
y'all doing? If anybody has any questions for me, now would be a great time. Actually, we did have a question come in and it is, what can Leslie recommend for outdoor protection against water and sunlight? What, like while well you're painting or? Or maybe for paintings. Oh. Being damaged by the elements, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure if I have the best answer for that. Um... I'm just trying to kind of think. You can like to seal a painting, she's saying. Oh, to seal or... it. Oh, yeah. So if you want to have like outdoor art in your backyard, that sort of thing. Um, I use a exterior verithane that has a light that has like a you know sort of light protectant in it. Um, and the, I'm just trying to think of the name of the product. I think it's Flecto by Verithane, I can double check that I have some down in my basement so I can run down when I have a minute or just near the end. Um, I used to do a lot of outdoor murals in people's yards and I've done murals on fences as well. And that's what I used to feel the work from um, you know all the elements. It's really also about how you start the process as well. So just making sure that you're using the right products that whatever you're painting on has been primed with the right primer and then anything you do in between whether you use acrylic or oil uh is fine it's then you just need to make sure that you have the you know enough coats of sealer at the end so i would do at least three coats with a uv protectant and it's a water based you can use water based it doesn't have to be oil based so i can definitely get you the product name i'm pretty sure it's made by flecto and there's a comment in the chat that art resin is a good product, oh, yeah. uh, but it is a bit expensive. It is. And yeah, I think it would, for me, it's about like how much area I would need to cover. I, so if you've got something small, the resin would be great for sure. Or if, you know, money's not an issue for you, then yeah, that's a, that's a fabulous product as well. And if anybody else has any ideas about what they've, what they've used. I like having art hanging up in my backyard. So I do have my sort of backyard summer paintings um, that I hang on, like, on my fence and on my garage. And it doesn't necessarily have to be painted right onto a surface. Then you can just move, you know, move it around. And then when winter comes, I just put all those paintings in my garage. And there's also another suggestion, uh, Liquid X brand, and there's a few different finishes to pick from. Yeah, definitely. Good suggestion. Li Liquid X makes fantastic products. In fact, the white that I'm using, I'll just show you some of the, I use a variety of different paints. So this is um, this line basics is what they would kind of call their student line, but I actually find it's very good. Um, and I use this line a lot, Rayotech. And I buy all of the Securis. I live five minutes away from Securis. It's very dangerous. My entire family has an addiction to art materials. Um, so we have to just <laughs> hold ourselves back sometimes. <laughs> so they sell the Securis and it's, a uh, really good product for acrylic painting and um, just a good amount of product. You get a lot of, you know, bang for your buck sort of thing. And the other one, oh, Reeves. This is the black I'm using. So Reeves is also a fantastic brand. Now, golden paints, if you are familiar with those, are absolutely lovely. Uh, and so I save my really expensive high-end paint for like my finishes at the end. And I tend to use like a cheaper valued paint to set up my images, if that makes sense. 
So how are we doing? Do we feel like we're ready to, to move ahead and put some color? I barely have any battery break. I think, I think so. One oh, person yeah. was just wondering if they'll need a finer brush for the clouds, which I think the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Now for these little landforms that we're going to do, um, it's, it's kind of up to you. I guess it kind of depends also like your, how wide these got. I'm going to, I'm going to continue to use this sort of mid range brush that I suggested. Sorry, my computer's doing goofy things here. There we go. Okay. I'm going to use this mid range size, but if you wanted to move in to the smaller brush, yes. you can. This is the smaller brush that I suggested that you have. We'll definitely use this for the clouds and some- Oh my gosh. The I'm painting thing. this the wrong perspective. You didn't notice either, hey? Look, her perspective is like this. Oh, oh that's this. I, I can hear somebody talking about their painting. Oh, well. <laughs> that's not How are we doing? <laughs> I just heard someone talking about perspective. Well, there was a big revelation somewhere out there. So <laughs> <I guess. laughs> I'm sorry I'm not muted. <laughs> it's okay. It was good, good entertainment. Yeah, I got in late. Sorry, Manitoba time. <laughs> well, glad you're, you're here. You're in Manitoba, my goodness. Hello to you. That's good. I sorry. love it. I forgot the time difference. Wow. Oh, I'm I'm really impressed. Well, don't worry about the perspective of your painting. It's your perspective. It's how you see it. <laughs> All right, my friends. Um, I'm going to move back into this blue palette. Blaine or what? <laughs> oh, it's making me Maybe laugh. we could just ask everyone to make sure they're on mute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you never, you just never know what's going to happen. In fact, this door behind me here is my son's bedroom. So uh, the last time we did this, he just came out of there and completely forgot that I was doing this. Uh, I did remind him that if he did come out of the room, he needed to make sure that he had, that he was properly dressed and all of that. So I'm going to add some more phthalo blue on there because I did use up quite a bit in putting the background color. So another little scoop of blue and I'm gonna need some more white. And we're gonna need a little bit of black here, but not very much. So I'm gonna put some white on there. The joys of COVID and having your almost adult children, well, one, one of my children are adults. I have a 25 year old and a 20 year old my 20 year old will be 21 in three weeks. Um, and so they both moved home last March because of the pandemic and they're still here. <laughs> and I love my kids so much, but our house is not big. So uh, some days are kind of interesting. The sharing of space. And I do quite a lot of my work from home. I teach um, my classes, my online classes in the afternoon from home or I have that option to. And so uh, my family's gotten quite used to hearing me teach and vice versa. My students will often hear my family and that's just the reality of our lives right now. And then sometimes my cat meows or, you know, some stuff happens. But I think we're all actually, you know, I think getting quite used to it. So, if anything crazy happens and people walk by me, you'll know why. All right, I'm going to mix some color for these little landforms. And I'm going to do like a mid-tone blue. So I've got a bit of white, a little bit of blue. I'm gonna start a bit darker and then we'll work. We'll add some highlights. And I've added a tiny little bit of black there. Now, I'm not quite sure how this is gonna look, so I'm gonna just try it. Oh, that's actually not bad. Although, I think I want it to be a bit darker. So I'm gonna add a bit more blue. 
tiny bit of black. Let's try that. Uh, yeah, that's what I want. And I'm going to fill in that entire form back there. Now, again, if your brush is too big, then move to your smaller brush. Just, you know, use the tools that work best for you. The paint is pulling a little bit, so I am adding a bit of water. I'm just filling in the form. The beauty of this painting is that the shapes are very organic and loose and hopefully you feel comfortable even though you might feel, I don't know, a little stressed just because of keeping up with me, but I don't want you to feel that way. So I'm just hoping that by keeping the forms really simple, it, it'll be you know, more comfortable for you to follow along. And I just blocked some water on there. So now I have a white blob there. I'll take care of that later. Okay, I'm gonna go to the other side of the form in the middle and fill those shapes in back there. So whoop, a little bit dark, I'm gonna add a bit more white. Sorry, I'm just looking at our time. We're at 812, that's pretty good. We'll have lots of time to get all those little details in. So it all kind of depends on like what your background color is looking like. You just want to make sure that these forms are darker than your, your sky. So something like that. Leslie, um, yeah. we had a question uh, about what you mean when you say that the paint is pulling. Yeah, if you feel like your brush is dragging, you know, kind of like it's not running smoothly along the canvas, it just means you need to have more water. Or if like if you're not able to fill in the shape and you've got like color that's underneath coming through, that's what I mean by sort of dragging. So then you can just add a, add a bit of water, dip your brush in the water, add a little bit of water to your color mix. And then when you apply the paint, it should just go on like nice and smooth. And also you won't have brush strokes then. Does that make sense? Yep, that's great, thank you. Okay. Okay, so I've got those formations in. Now there is one right here and I actually forgot to get us to draw it. So it's up to you. You could just wing it if you want or you could go back in with your pencil or your charcoal. So we just want it to sit in front. I'm gonna draw right up into the paint I just put on there. Ooh. I'm just being very bold now. And I'm gonna put that form in too. That one's quite dark. So you're gonna add some black. So that color is what we would call a Prussian blue, which is blue, black, and a tiny little bit of, actually it's just blue, blue and black. There we go. And like really nice and loose. If you're feeling bold, don't worry about drawing it. You just draw it in with your paintbrush. Very fun, very freeing to do that. Ooh, I'm, st I'm really starting to get, talk about perspective. I feel like I'm getting some perspective now. So we've got four, we've got forms in the foreground. We've got our, our middle ground. And then we have our sky, which is our background. 
So I'm feeling pretty good about my painting so far. Um, I'm going to stop there and leave those areas to dry for a bit. And I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll go into the sky and into the water because we want to get that going. Um, and so then basically we, we've touched like every area, we sort of set it up and then we'll spend a half an hour, the last half an hour, just like adding final details and, and some highlights and some shadows. We do need to go back in here and do some work in here, but I'm gonna suggest that we get our clouds and our water in a little bit more detailed and then we'll spend some time in this area here. This is, this is probably the most challenging part of the image. Definitely challenging for me. Um, and we do need to go back and, and build up our color as well. So just know that we're gonna spend some more time in here. If you're looking at your form going, ah, I don't like the way that looks. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush because, oh, I'm having a hard time tonight and splashing water everywhere. There we go, okay. Um, I'm gonna stick, we're sticking with the blue palette, but we're mostly going to be working with white with a tiny bit of blue added, okay? And I am going to use my smaller brush for this. So if you've got a smaller brush, great. If you don't, and you're gonna try and work with your mid-size one, you can do it. This is my mid-size one, I could actually, maybe I will. Change my mind, I have, I have decided to <laughs> stick with this size brush, but it's really up to you, okay? How you wanna do that. So even though the clouds look white, um, nothing in nature is pure white. Well, not nothing, but definitely skies are variations of layers of, of, you know, sort of atmosphere. So we want to give that impression of um, sort of like moisture, that sort of thing. We don't want pure white. What will happen is then you'll just have these clouds. They'll, they'll look um, almost cartoony. So I'm gonna ask that you take some white and you add a little bit of blue to it. So you want just a nice soft baby blue. And then I'm going to float this color in. And I'm just gonna keep my forms really nice and loose. I'm not even gonna worry about even the lines that I drew. I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna use them as guidelines. Now to you, you might think that that is pure white. It might look pure white. It's not, I did add some blue to that. So I'm working with a, a baby blue, really super soft. Very fun. It's my favorite thing to paint. You cannot go wrong with this. Just let the paint flow. If some areas are heavier than others, that's great too, because that just gives you some dimension. If, if some of the paint goes on thin in a more transparent way, fantastic. Or if you want your clouds to be, to look you know, thick and fluffy, that's fine too. Whoops. So you can see maybe even in this area, the more water you add, the more transparent it looks. And then you have some of that blue color from underneath coming through. Um, 
that's that's one way to do this or you can keep it thick like i did in the beginning in this one here or you can do a variation of whatever you do hopefully you're having fun with it and everybody's breathing and enjoying themselves Okay, so I'm going to now fill in this. It's, it's basically a quite a thick band of light, which is right behind the horizon line. And that goes behind those rock forms. So just something to remember, like I said, everyone's background is gonna be a little bit different. You just wanna make sure that this soft blue you're putting on is lighter than your background color so that you can really see it. And then I'm going to go to the other side. Now, this area is a bit smaller. I'm going to use my small brush for this area. I like to just flip back and forth with my tools. There we go. We've got that background almost filled in. So feeling pretty good about that. I might just go back in in a couple areas and add here and there. Just again, I'm not using pure white. I'm I've added a tiny bit of blue. I just felt like my clouds were disappearing a little bit. So I'm just building them up a little bit more. Yeah, that's not bad. Feeling pretty good about that. So I'm gonna stop there and move, keep moving along. We're gonna head down into the water. I just wanna make sure that we have enough time. So I'm gonna keep you all moving. Um, so for our water, the lightest area is going to meet our horizon line. And it does want to be lighter than the color that we just put down here. So you're going to add more white um, and as we work our way down, it's going to get, we're going to move back into our blue. So right now we're going to, I would just put some pure white on your brush. I'm going to just test this out. Okay. Add a tiny bit of blue. And again, it, it kind of depends on like, what this color looks like on your painting, but you just need this area to be a little bit lighter than that. So everyone's going to mix that a little bit differently. I have added some blue to it. And I'm going to set up that horizon water line. So I'm, I'm using horizontal brush strokes and the paint is fairly opaque right now, but as we work our way down, you'll see what I'm gonna do here. It's a fun little trick. 
but I am just going to put in on either side. So the, the, the lightest sort of section of our water where it meets our horizon like oops sorry <laughs> don't really need to be seeing the top of my head there. So we're working from lightest and then we're going to move down into the rest of the water and we're going to be getting a little bit darker. But while I have this nice light white off, like slightly off white color on my brush, I'm going to just lay that into all of those areas. Okay, so here's the little trick. Um, I'm going to add a bit of blue to this white and I'm gradually going to add more and more blue and I'm going to move down into this water area. Okay, it's a little bit on the dark side. So what I'm looking for are short, I'm going to use the word kind of staccato, a music term, short horizontal brush strokes. And I don't want you to fill the area completely. So we're looking for textural. And what you're going to do is you're going to start to leave the blue to come through in areas. And we're also trying to give that texture and that feeling of water. So the further down I get, the more blue, the more of my original base color I'm leaving behind, the less white I'm putting on there. Ooh, wow, I'm actually quite happy with that. If you, if you can take a minute, stand back from your painting, you might even wanna hold your painting up and take a look at it from a bit of a distance. Because when we continuously look at something close up like this, I feel like you, you kind of lose perspective. So take a minute and see if you can, if you got someone with you there, you can get them to hold the painting up for you. I am using my finger as a blending tool, <laughs> which I do. I don't mind having paint on me, so. Okay, so I am being very careful now how much white I put down here because I really want this to be a darker area. We can pop some dark blue in there near the end. So hopefully you can see that, that graduation from light to dark, but I'm just using the white now down here very cautiously. Ooh, is it okay that I'm happy with my own work? <laughs> and you should be too, you should be celebrating. And I cannot wait to see everyone's paintings. I'm hopefully I'm gonna have a chance to see everyone's work. Um, so I'm gonna move to the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing in this body of water over here. Oops. I can hear the wind howling outside my window right now. It sounds very ominous. Yeah, same Leslie. <laughs> Can you? I yeah. certainly don't. I hope we don't lose power because that's going to be really sad. We are going to keep our fingers crossed. Yes. Well, actually, we lost power here uh, yesterday for two hours in my neighborhood. And I was right in the middle of putting together a submission to the Art Gallery of Hamilton for their art show and sale. So I was. Uh, trying to write an artist statement and I had to upload images and I had no power for two hours. So 
Oh no, isn't that always the way? Yep, that's okay. I got it done. I got it. <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right. Well, I'm feeling good about that water. I hope you're all having fun with that water. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm again using my finger as a blending tool because that's just the way I roll. Um, okay, good. I'm just taking a look at my work here. Um, so ideally you've got some textural movement in your water. You've got maybe a little bit, you know, graduation of color from dark to light. And hopefully you're, you're really starting to see, sorry, some dimension in your work. And like I say, maybe just take a minute and take a bit of a, um, get some distance from your painting because I guarantee you, you will be quite pleased with it. Okay, so we've got, it's, it's 831. We have a half an hour to wrestle, basically wrestle this area down. And we're gonna go back up into here and maybe we'll do that really quickly right now while, we, while we've got our whites, bluey whites on our brush. Let's do that really quick. And then we're gonna move into this area. And I feel very confident that we'll be able to get that completed and have time for a couple of other little details and then we should be done, okay? So we're gonna add a highlight to these little forms back here. Again, I'm still working in my blue palette. It does, depend on this color that you put down. So you just want a color, we're doing a highlight, you want a color that's lighter than this, but not super light yet. So it's kind of like a mid-tone blue. So I'm gonna just mix this. I won't know until I put it on here, really. Let's see. So I'm just trying to give these some forms. Okay, I just did a little test. I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter. There we go, okay. So this is a highlight. And I'm just putting that on the top of, and then bring, kind of bringing it down. Get creative with those little forms. Like you can see, it doesn't take much. Highlights are actually amazing in that you don't need very much and it, really goes a long way visually. Yeah, I quite like those actually. All right, I'm gonna to hop to the other side here, do the same thing. So we're just, we're trying to create form And we're doing this just by creating a highlight that sits on top. So you can see the like the process that we've gone through. You've got to you've got to got to have that underpainting down first before you get to these lovely little details. So you know, just something to remember, get, get the forms in, get all those sort of dark colors in first and then you build on top and then it's almost effortless at the end. And I think I'm going to call that done for my forms, but like, it's up to you if you wanna break them up a little bit more. So by putting that highlight here, I'm just suggesting that there's another form sitting in front of those ones. Okay. Hopefully everyone's feeling good about their artwork. Don't be hard on yourself. Allow yourself to just keep playing. Hopefully you are. All right, so while we actually have the blues still going, um, let's pop down into this area and throw some blue in there. Okay, I'm gonna move back to my mid-size brush for this. 
this one. I'm going to mix up another little batch of blue and white. Now I did have on the list turquoise blue. So if anybody does have it, you could also um, add a little bit of that. If you don't have turquoise blue, you could add some yellow. We're gonna need it anyways for the, excuse me, the green outline. Sorry, I'm just gonna take a sip of tea here. Okay, so I don't have turquoise blue. So I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow on my palette. I want to shift this bluey area to a little bit of turquoise, which will set it apart from the other areas of the water. So I'm having trouble getting some yellow here. Okay, so it's just a tiny bit of yellow, not very much. Again, for those of you who have turquoise blue, if you manage to find some awesome, you could use that as well. And if you don't have turquoise, how do you make it, Leslie? You make it with blue and yellow, and then you're gonna add a little bit of white. Awesome, thank you. You can see that blue with the yellow, it's making it green, but we wanna keep it in the blue green world, not the green blue world, if that makes sense. Let's see how that looks. Okay. I'm feeling like it's a bit green, so I'm gonna add some more blue to it. <laughs> That's painting, it's a dance back and forth. Okay, so I've just ta I've taken that area and I've kind of divided it in half and this is me being really wild and, and kind of painting and drawing at the same time, which hopefully you're feeling bold and comfortable doing as well. And I'm gonna bring that color all the way across up here. Into that area that we reserved earlier. Okay, and then I'm going to go into this area here and I'm going to pop in a slightly darker blue. So this is where you might want to have some black on the go. I have had this palette set up like this for a while. So I've got phthalo blue, I've got some black, and I've got my white, and then that little bit of yellow. If you wanted to turn it a bit turquoisey. So I, I want this section here to be a little bit darker. So I am adding a little bit of black and a little bit, there we go. I'm just filling that in. Leslie, did you mix anything with the turquoise? Um, for those, what, for people who have turquoise? Uh, no, I didn't mix anything. In order to make my turquoise, because I don't, I don't have any, I have mixed phthalo blue, yellow, and a little bit of white. But if you have, if you're using turquoise right out of the bottle, if it's too bright, you can add a touch of blue and a touch of black. I, I'd say maybe a touch of black to take the tone down. Great, thanks, Saucy. <laughs> I think I got that out. <laughs> okay. So I'm filling in just that little area back there in behind. Um, adding a bit of water because my paint's pulling a bit. Okay. So this, like I said before, this area can go a variety of different ways. We're just going to try and do our own interpretation, okay? As you can see, there's like some grouping, some sections where the color shifts a little bit. 
Uh, what I've tried to do for us is to get us as set up as possible so that we don't have to go back and do too much more and then we can get these lovely green highlights on. So I do feel because I'm looking at mine that my, my color needs to be probably have a second layer and then we can start to kind of divide up these shapes. So I am going to put my brush down, put my brush in the water for a minute. And with your pencil or your, if you have charcoal, but you can go back in with pencil, I'm going to really loosely, super loose, draw in some of those, just define those forms a little bit more. So we know that this area up here is going to be the darkest. It's gonna be like that phthalo green and black. This area in here is going to be brown. If you don't have brown, which we know at least one person doesn't and that's okay, then just you can keep that, maybe that area a little bit lighter and make that one a little bit darker with your greens and your blacks. And Let's see, we've got a section that goes in front of there. Hang on one second here, okay. I just gotta count my shapes here. And that one comes across, okay. And then this one comes in front, okay. I got it. <laughs> We're just kind of drawn on the go here. And then we've got here, this is the second time I've done this painting and I have left this shape out before. So I'm gonna throw that in there really quickly. It's kind of like a bright green, rocky area. And then this stuff down here, <laughs> anything goes, but I'm gonna try and follow in Carmichael's steps to the best of my ability. So I think that these blue areas are kind of like water trickling over the rocks. That's my interpretation. And you might see things a little bit differently and that's totally fine. I, just, I don't think there's any rules as to how we see this. So I know that's probably hard to see, but with my pencil, I've just gone in and like scribed in some of those areas. All right, so I'm gonna go back with my green, black and brown palette. And I am going to work, I think, I'm gonna stick with my medium sized brush. You might need to rinse that out if you've got blue things, blue paint still on there. So I'm going to mix a bit of black, a little bit of brown and a little bit of green like we did before. And I'm, I'm putting in kind of like a second coat here. And I'm gonna bring that around. Oh, that looks good. Well, I'm quite happy with that. So you can see the, the more, like, painting is about layers. The more you do, the more defined your work will look, the more interesting it will look, the more layers you have. And also what it does is it, it can move things, bring things forward, move things back. It's actually really quite amazing how you can do that. So my next section here, I'm going to make a bit more brown. So I'm, Pretty much using the burnt umber on its own. I'm my, keeping my paint quite thick right now. I feel like with these rock forms, you could afford to be a little bit more textural with the application of your paint. And then there's another section here that's quite brown. So I'm going to fill that in. So I'm mostly just working with the brown. 
again, it, it's going to depend on your, your, your tones and your colors, how dark you went the first time or how light or dark that you went. So I'm just filling in those shapes. I'm gonna bring this brown around over here. So if you haven't noticed already, we're not, we're not exactly playing in realism here. This is not photorealistic imagery. Uh, we're working with colorful forms that are kind of abstracted. If you are looking for hyper-realism, uh, well, for one thing, we would need <laughs> a lot more time and we would apply the paint in a different way and our forms would be drawn in a different way. Okay, so I've got that brown. My last section here is, again, it's, it's similar to this one up here. So it's more green and black. So I'm gonna take some of my green, mix some of my black. I'm gonna pop that in there. So I'm doing a second coat and I'm also defining the shapes a little bit more or a lot more. Okay. So we're at, how are we doing for time? We're eight, 847? Yep, 847. Okay, we can do it. We can do it. Oh, that looks, that looks nice. I quite like that. I hope that you're happy with what you're doing. I'm feeling pretty, pretty comfortable with my work right now. I know you may feel that we're moving very fast. So here's what I suggest is to follow along till the end. And then you've got time to continue to work on your painting, whether you decide to put it aside for a couple of days um, and then get back to it. That's my one a child just walking behind me there trying to find food um or you know keep going with it if you want to keep working tonight after we're done it's it's totally up to you how far you want to push this okay so i'm going to put that greeny blacky color into those rocks right in the front build those up a little bit as well so what we're heading towards right now is those final highlights that will help to define these shapes. Okay. So this is where you're going to need, we're gonna stick with this palette, but you're going to need some yellow because you're going to, we're gonna add these bright green highlights that will go all the way around these forms, okay? So I'm gonna put some yellow onto that palette. Okay, I just squeezed out way too much yellow, but there we go. So you're gonna need green, you're gonna need some yellow, and you might need to add a tiny bit of white depending, so I'm just gonna keep my white close by because I could just use up what I have here, okay? Okay, we're gonna go for these bright green outlines first and then we'll pop back into these areas with a white highlight and then we'll have to call it a day. Okay, so to make this highlight color, I'm gonna take some yellow and I'm gonna add some green to it. And I'm gonna put that on and see how it looks because you've gotta start somewhere. Okay, that's not bad. Again, you wanna make sure that it's lighter than the color that you have down. I think I'm going to add a bit more yellow. 
So this is where Carmichael gets very, I would say, definitely playing in the abstract world. Um, to me, this light green represents lichen, moss, you know, maybe you see it as something different, which is totally fine. It's kind of how I see it, what he was going for. This is a signature move of the group of seven, these kind of linear lines around things. So I'm gonna go into this area. So how, how you apply this is totally up to you. You can just make short broken lines. Keep it kind of loose and free flowing. And I'm just following along those shapes and being really kind of loose and not worrying about this too much. It's just a suggestion and it helps to de define the forms as well. But like I say, I sort of see this as like this, you know, the sun hitting the tops of the, the rocks and there being probably some mossy kind of clumps of moss in areas. Very fun. This is one of my most favorite parts <laughs> is the highlight areas. Um, I'm going to use this color and I might darken it down a little bit with a little bit more green and pop that green rock in over here. If you don't have room for it or you don't want to put this in, don't worry about it. I'm just gonna throw that in there. Like I said, you're in control of this and it does not have to be exactly the same. <laughs> so this is the third time I've painted this painting and this one, this one looks completely different and yet the same. Okay. I'm going to brighten those highlights a little bit in a couple places. So I'm gonna take my yellow with my green, but I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. And so that we get this like lovely, super bright highlight sitting on top, but don't put it absolutely everywhere. So you're just hitting that in places where the light is coming from. And I'm seeing probably our light coming in from the left-hand side. With highlights, you need to like really hold yourself back. Um, I think you, you, know, you wanna be really judicious about how you use them. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna do here is put some highlight in these areas, kind of put in these little water forms. So I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm using my small brush still, and I'm gonna go back with my blue palette. And it's really similar to what we just did with the green, but we're gonna be working in the blue world. So you wanna make sure that your highlight is lighter than with the color that you have already. So I'm going to pop that On there like that. And we have about five minutes left, Leslie. Okay, we can do it. <laughs> Almost there. For sure we can. <laughs> I feel very confident. Now, like I said, you might be looking at your work thinking, oh, no, this is nowhere near done, or this is not the way I want this to look. 
And you have absolutely every right to feel that way. So I would encourage you, seeing as you have all the materials and you've come this far, to you know take some time and work on it a little bit more get it to the place where you want it to be obviously you know two hours is a <laughs> is a, a a slightly tight timeline but it's i feel it's enough to at least get yourself like really close to a finished piece and then like i said like maybe even leave it a couple days take a look at it get some feedback from your family, take photos of it, send it to friends, see what they think. All right, so I've done a highlight here, I've done a highlight, highlight in this area, and I'm now going to be really bold and just fill in these. I actually really love these little shapes down here. So as I paint this, I'm imagining water trickling through the crevices in the rocks. That's sort of how I see this. I'm gonna bring that color over there. You can just see how I'm actually drawing with my brush. You don't need a lot of paint for these kinds of things, these highlight areas. Whew. Okay. Well, I feel like I'm going to I'm going to call it I'm going to call it as done as we can be done. <laughs> That's we... great. All right, are we um, able to see anybody's work? If yes. anyone's willing to share, we would love I to would see them. I would absolutely love to see where people got to. So if you're feeling bold, um, don't be shy. We're all in this together. You can turn your video on and unmute and Tell us. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Oh, wow. 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 Holy wow. cow. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Ross, impressive. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. That was really good. Thank you. Have you painted before? Um, watercolors mostly. A little bit of acrylic, but mostly watercolor. Okay. Put it on my screen, Kate, okay, because you're oh. have to Hi. Whoa. Oh, oh, wow. I'm getting nice. there. I had to catch you guys up. are all good. Look yeah. at it. Wow. Holy cow. Okay. okay. This is the best part. This is like Christmas Day. It's amazing. I am loving every single wow. one of them. I know. And it we did record. I'll just tell people. So if they do want to kind of go over stuff, yeah. it, it'll be available. Uh, oh, fantastic. In about oh, a week. Oh, my goodness. Reverse. Oh wow, look at all oh, these gorgeous look at the paintings. Jacks on theirs. All right. Wow. Oh, so who's wild. that at the top? <laughs> oh, wow. oh my. Wow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Bill, but you're great. Somebody's kind of got waves. Suzanne Bill, has waves. Are really <laughs> Amanda. Oh, has I love waves. the green one. Sharon did. That's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, nice tone oh, there. We should, turn, we should turn it off then. Super cool. <laughs> It's a lot of fun and I'm not even finished. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear so are people feeling inspired to oh, wow. a little bit wow. more. Jeez. Yeah, it looks like uh, people figured it out. Yeah. You yeah. Know, figured out what they used I'm what they had and, and made it their own. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we can use it as a. Uh, yours. Thank you so much. It was Thank wonderful. You. Okay. Good night. You're welcome. Good night, Good night everyone. You. Thanks for coming. Bye.
It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Some time. <laughs> and we Thank will be so sending much. out a survey. So we hope you will take a few moments to fill that out. But Yes, thank right. you so much, Leslie, and That's thank you so much day. to all of you thank for joining you. us. Right. Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> Very proud of you. Wow. Everyone did <laughs> great work, for sure. Yes. <laughs> all right.